welcome back to another video guys and in this video we're just going to do a bit of a short update on the spin effects hopping mice don't be a stranger in the night take a chance for some romance don't copy your So as you guys can probably see, not much has actually changed in the enclosure here behind me. It's all still pretty simple. Lots of red dirt, lots of hollow logs, lots of mice now. I think I'm up to 19 at the last count. Um, and I've organized to move a few of those guys on just because it's kind of starting to overpopulate this little tank a little bit. Doesn't look like it now, but wait until you put food in there. In there. They are everywhere. It's absolutely crazy. Now, a few videos ago, I mentioned that these guys were actually nibbling on each other's ears as well. I think, I think I may have solved that issue. I've actually done a couple of mite treatments on these guys using a um, small animal mite spray, mite and life spray. I mean, I, I didn't have any other obvious signs of anything there, so I'm not 100% set on the fact that it was potentially mice or lice or anything like that, but, you know... There's no harm treating the animals for it at the end of the day. It's a very safe procedure. So I've done that, done I think two or three treatments now with that particular spray. And so far I think I've seen very minimal nibbling on ears or anything. So I think, I think I may have that under control. So that's a little good positive start to kind of start off this video. It's always nice when you can actually uh, kind of nut out some problems with some animals and, and fix them right up. So other than that guys, I do have another little quick update for you here as well is... Danny and I have actually had our, our kid now, which is really, really exciting. So we ended up having a baby boy, named him Finnan. And uh, yeah, really excited to have him in our, in our lives now. And uh, yeah, being part of, the, part of the family now, which is, you know, taking a bit to get used to, of course. Uh, so hopefully videos and stuff don't start lacking at all here. I am going to try to start, still kind of power on through all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that's just something to kind of keep you guys in the loop as far as what's happening in my personal life as well, because I do have a little rug wrap that's keeping me run off my toes a fair bit now. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for him to actually be a little helper in this room too, because I reckon that'll be really cool. And, you know, it'd be cool to see him kind of really get into this sort of stuff as well, if he chooses to. So the, the other reason that I'm telling you that update is that only happened recently, and I did actually end up spending a few days away from home where I kind of just put as much food as I could possibly put into these enclosures and kind of just let the animals be for, I think it was about four or five days essentially by the time I kind of came back to my senses. But the reason that I'm kind of saying this again is because these guys, I have been feeding them a lot since I have been back in, in the home, um, but I also have been buying a few things just to try to tinker around with their diet a little bit too and just add some more enrichment into their diet. Now this is something that I think we can do with any captive animal, right? So whether that be a lizard, a frog, a little mammal, a bird or whatever, you know, just like us, variety of food is the spice of life. And one thing that I did decide to get, and I ordered it while I was away, is a little bit of Wambaru small carnivore food. So this is quite often used for things like small native carnivores such as dunnarts and the likes, but it's also recommended to be part of, essentially 10 to 20% part of a hopping mouse diet here on the back. It's actually got that written right there. So what you do with this food is you essentially turn it into a little bit of a crumble, just using a little bit of water and kind of mixing the dry food around in that water until you get the right sort of consistency. So today, these guys haven't been fed in... I think a day. I think I don't think I fed them anything yesterday. I did feed them the day before, which this isn't uncommon for me to do. Um, it is quite common for me to kind of just pop a big bowl of seed or whatever and a mix of veggies or whatever in there and kind of let it go, okay, that's you for a couple of days. You're all sorted. They've got the water dripper bottle on the back of this little post here, which is great. And every now and then I will just pop in like a little bowl of fresh water as well, just so they can all have a bit of a gorge on water as well. Um, but what I've decided what I'm doing today is I am going to give them a bit of a feast. But I want to start off by putting this in there and just see how they actually react to it. Because I have tried them on things such as mealworms, black soldier fly larvae, uh, crickets. Um, I've tried tongue feeding a couple of woodies here and there. And none of them have really liked it. But apparently insects do make up part of a, a hopping mouse diet, essentially. So I'm a little bit, you know, 
whether they like it or not, I, I'm not 100% sure. I know plenty of other people out there have given their hopping mice plenty of uh, protein in the form of insects and things, and obviously I've got lots of lizards and things here too, so there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do that, but my particular mice just don't seem that hell keen on it. So anyway, I'm gonna give this a go. We're gonna see what they kind of do and how they react to it and see if it does kind of intrigue them and get them a little bit stimulated for something. And on top of that, we'll kind of just give them another variety of food so they can have a little bit of a feast tonight and cause all sorts of mayhem. Uh, so over in this cupboard of absolute chaos, as far as, you know, reptile paraphernalia and things go, I do have this kind of section down here, which is predominantly for the hopping mice. So I have different types of seed. I have kind of like a small parrot seed, as well as a budgie and a finch seed. I've got water bowls. I've also got like a floral mix that I want to try out again to see if they take to that. I might put that on top of some greens and veggies. I also feed them occasionally a little bit of uh, cat kibble. So that's something that kind of gives them a little bit of protein. Back here I've got a rat and mouse cube, as well as some crushed peanuts as a bit of a treat, as well as some pumpkin uh, kernels as well. So there's a whole variety of things there. So what I'm going to do is essentially make up a couple of little bowls. So we're going to make up a salad or thereabouts in that sort of bowl there. We're going to do a probably the crumble or, or a seed mix probably in that bigger white bowl. And then we might do the crumble in that bowl because that's probably not going to be that much actual food. And then we're going to let them have at it and uh, see how they react to it all. All right, so we've got the, the food here. And let's have a little quick look at what we get in the box. I don't think it's anything too fancy as far as what comes in here. So we do have a little scoop, which is a little scoop that's, I believe, 10 or 15 grams. 15 grams is apparently one level scoop here. And that's what they recommend is essentially, uh, what do we got here? Two level scoops was, oh sorry, two level scoops is 15 grams of powder to 10 mil of water. So I will kind of just roughly do the water. I'll just use a little spray bottle to essentially hydrate the water and then kind of mix it around and see where we get into a crumble. But they basically say, don't turn it into a paste. So that's what we want to avoid. Okay, so we've got a scoop. We've also got our powdered food here as well. So now let's have a little bit of a look and get a few scoops of this out. So because there is quite a few mice in there, we are going to give them a little bit of food today. I might be a little bit cheeky and... Oh, let's see how far two scoops gets us. I don't mind giving it a bit of a crack just to see how they like it without overdoing it first. I'm going to do three scoops. I'm just going to make that call and I'll try to avoid uh, too many more heavy protein foods for the day. Alright. Pack that all back up in there. And we'll get some water happening in here. Let's see if we can make a little bit of a, um, a crumble. So the plan is to very slowly hydrate this, so just starting with little bits of water at a time. So we don't really want to make a paste, we just want to kind of hydrate this crumble. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I'm happy with that sort of consistency. Let's well keep these little guys pretty well fed and we'll add in a few other little bits and pieces as we go but for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this into the enclosure first and foremost and we're going to have a little bit of a look at see how they react to it without any other sort of food in there at the moment. Okay, so they haven't taken to it just yet. But that's kind of to be expected when you've got a new food in with your animals. You know, it's gonna take them a little while to kind of have a little bit of an adjustment period. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start making up everything else that I'm gonna be putting into this tank, which will generally encourage these guys to come out and suss things out a little bit more. And what I'll hope to see in that time is, you know, a little bit more activity around the actual uh, Wombaroo mix as well. I've got a little, a lot of little faces actually poking out now that are kind of interested, but I'm wondering if it's because they're smelling the Wombaroo stuff or whether it's because of the other food sources and things that are in here, kind of smelling up the room and such. So anyway, let's get started on doing that. And we'll have a little bit of a, a look back and we'll see these guys have an absolute tuck in to some good, good food. So something else that I've just been doing for the last few minutes is actually just rehydrating some of these uh, dried flowers. So it's just a floral mix. These are good for like bearded dragons and things. So if they're okay for dragons, there's no reason why they shouldn't be okay for the little mammals as well, as far as I'm concerned. So we're gonna try these out as well. I've just been hydrating them in the bottom of this exoterra bowl. You can see there's just a little bit of water in there, kind of just hydrating it all around. 
this bowl was clean beforehand. And what I'm gonna add into here as well, it's just some baby spinach. I quite often change this up, but spinach does tend to be a little bit of a staple for the for these guys as far as a green veggie goes, because it is convenient for me, but it's also pretty good for them too, and gives them a lot of good stuff, just as it does for humans. So I'm gonna pop that into there. Might actually just grab a little bit of this flour mix. I'll kind of just distribute it amongst the top a little bit, see if we can kind of get them to take that a little bit first. And most likely because there's water in the bottom of this too, they'll just gonna come in and lap up that water. I'll also add in this little chunk of carrot as well because they absolutely go bonkers for carrot. So that's what I'm gonna do as far as more kind of like a, a veggie wet food mix. I will probably just add a few other little treats in on top of this. Definitely starting to see a lot more activity inside of this enclosure now. You guys wait for this feast to just go on. These guys are gonna go absolutely bonkers. Anyway, so I've got some crushed peanuts. I don't give these guys, I probably do this like maybe once a week or something like that. I'll give them a little sprinkle on top of this. I kind of just think it's a little bit of enrichment. They can kind of just find these in amongst some of the food that they've got. Yeah, if they get a little piece, awesome. I don't go too bonkers, but as I said, at the moment there is about 19 of these mice in there. so. It is a little bit overstocked in my opinion. So a little bit of peanuts, a little bit of these kernels, and then we're gonna give them a dry food mix as well. Probably enough that should last them, again, a couple of days worth of food. So a few pumpkin kernels, again, just something else for them to kind of be able to rummage around in and get something a little bit different. So now that's prepped, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly rustle up some dry foods and we'll put this all together and then we'll put these two bowls in there and we'll see if these guys come out and have a little bit of a feast. There's so many little faces coming out from underneath this log now. They're all very curious. They can get some smells in the air. They can smell things like peanuts and, and their favorite sort of stuff. <laughs> a couple of them are getting a little bit cheeky and wanting to come out and have a, a little bit more of a, a get day. But yeah, these guys are cute little buggers. But yeah, 19 in here. I'm looking forward to moving probably about half of these guys on just to try to you know limit the amount of mess and cleaning and stuff that I have to do. So, hello mate, how are you? Where'd you go? Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so these guys are awesome little mice. I absolutely adore these as a species. They've, they have grown on me. Um, I, I did struggle a little bit with them at first, um, but quite often they've got quite little, little nice personalities, you know, even for little tiny native rodents, they're probably gonna try to chew my fingers because I smell delicious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, these guys are awesome little pets. I am really looking forward to just keeping these guys and, and obviously having my son involved in here. I reckon this will be an awesome little critter for him to kind of grow up watching as well. They're fantastic little animals. And you know, now that there's a bit more of a kind of natural feel to the environment as well, that just kind of hits my aesthetic spells, you know? Like I absolutely love kind of having this awesome backdrop in here. And of course, if you did want to see this backdrop actually getting put together and things, I do have a video out on that as well. It's just a vinyl background of a uh, Spinifex poster that I essentially had printed at a uh, sign writing shop. Watch out guys, you gonna stay in there. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I essentially just laminated it onto the back of the, the tank using the vinyl. So it is very durable, this stuff. This is a UV resistant vinyl. It is something that I will be selling down the line is images that I've taken out in the bush, just like this one. And we can put them in enclosures like this, just to kind of jazz up very simple enclosures. Cause at the end of the day, this is a very simple box, hollow logs, a little bit of heat. And I'm losing my left, right and center. Come on, get back in here. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, let's get this dry food prepped and then we'll put these other foods in and we'll watch these guys absolutely go bonkers. So we'll start with a bowl from there. I'm gonna put in some rat and mouse cubes. Now, I think the brand for these is like Lauk, Lauk? They used to be, they're a very popular cube amongst uh, rodent breeders. Um, I don't go too nuts on this stuff. I, I do find that, you know, it is handy if you're just in a pinch and you wanna load up on it, but sometimes they, they just distribute it around the tank a lot and they'll bury it and stash it and have all sorts of fun with it, which is of course what rodents do anyway. So on top of that, we're gonna put in some uh, trill, just some Nutribit budgery jar mix. So this is just a very fine seed, which they absolutely love getting into and cracking up. So I'll put a stack of that in there. They can kind of dig around for that other seed that's in the bottom of it. Oh, sorry, the other cubes rather. And then on top, we'll throw in a little bit of a, a parrot mix too, to just like some slightly larger seeds. So this should keep them going, considering the amount of food that's going into this tank, this should keep them going for a few days as well, which will just kind of give me a little bit with my, my new child that I'm getting used to. 
Oh, I've got another mouse jumping out. Hey, mate. Oh, some of these mice are so friendly, especially the ones that I've bred here. You know, they're, they're little characters. They, they love coming up and getting a little bit of a scratch and stuff, which I absolutely adore with these guys. Okay, so let's add these other mixes in and we'll see how we go. And we'll see if we can kind of entice them a little bit to have a little bit more fun with this Wombaroo crumble because I am excited to see if they do actually enjoy it. I'll see how they go. All right, there is a little bit of a feast for these guys. I'm gonna turn the time lapse on quickly so you can just see how bonkers these guys are gonna go. seen not too many of them have kind of really paid much attention to the actual crumble so it might be something that in future I mix in amongst their other foods just to see if that can kind of encourage them to eat it um, but you know as I said before everything in due course like it's just one of those other things that I'm going to add into their diet just so they've got another little option because as I've put little crickets and things inside of these enclosures they don't seem to really go for them so I end up just kind of getting them out myself. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about these hopping mice is it's given me a good reason to still come into this room even though most of the animals are actually slowing down. It makes me come in and I do get to see a little bit more behaviour and stuff like that out of some of the animals that are a little bit more cryptic as well. And it's because I'm coming in to feed these guys and check these guys out all throughout winter because they just don't stop being mammals. You know, it's just a change of season to them. They don't slow down their feeding or anything like that. They've definitely been a very welcome addition into this lizard room i suppose you'd call it um great little mice absolutely interactive i i can't get enough of them and it's always interesting to just watch little behaviors as they bound around the place and you know keep me entertained i'm looking forward to seeing if they do end up taking to that particular food that one brew food i'm sure in due course they will but you know maybe as i said i just got to mix it in with a few other bits and pieces Alrighty, guys well without any further ado from me Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like it down below. Drop it a comment if you did like this video and you do enjoy the hopping mice. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content, including lizard content and other reptile related content. And guys, don't forget to check me out on Teespring and Patreon as well. If you do want to get uh, you know, a little bit more supportive of the channel, they are the two best options for you out there to be able to kind of get in, get a bit supportive and uh, yeah, you know, help me keep the lights on here and look after these little buggers. Alrighty guys, until the next video, Take it easy and I'll see you then.